Hey guys, welcome to the video series explaining synchronous contours employing flip-flop circuits. Before we get into the meat of the matter, let's first look at a brief introduction to flip-flops. To start the video, we'll first look at what sequential circuits are, then we'll look at a basic SR latch, and then we'll talk about clocking and why it is necessary. And finally, to end this video, we'll talk about SR flip-flops. Before we start talking about flip-flop circuits, let's try to understand what the difference between combinational circuits and sequential circuits are. Combinational circuits are those whose outputs depend on the current input signals mm -hmm. only. And these are used in adders, decoders, multiplexers, etc. Sequential circuits, on the other hand, uh, they depend on both the current as well as past input signals of the circuits, and they provide a memory element that stores the previous output, which can be fed into the circuit as present output. This is not possible using combinational circuits. So these are the circuit these are the types of circuits used for flip-flops. Basically, a flip-flop or a latch is a circuit that one is bistable, meaning it can exist in one of two states, and two, it has two outputs, let's call it Q, and the complement, which is not Q. So one of the most basic forms of a sequential circuit is a latch. Let's look at the SR latch, for example. The S stands for set, and the R stands for reset. Here we have a visual representation of a circuit and its truth table. So let's see how the, truth the circuit operates to get this truth table. Let's first assume that S is 0 and R is 1. So as we know, or as we should know, anytime a 1 is fed into a NOR gate, the output is always 0. So Q is 0, and this 0 is fed into this NOR gate as input, sorry. So a 0 or a 0, and NOR 0 would give us a 1. So this condition where R is 1 and S is 0 is true. Now let's look at when S is 1 and R is 0. 1 into a NOR gate would give us 0. The 0 is fed into this gate as input. 1 and a 0 would give us a 0. Uh, I was wondering what was wrong there. 0 and a 0 would give us a 1. So, um, the condition here where S is 1 and R is 0 is true. Okay, so let's keep these outputs and see what happens when S is 0 and R is 0. So this 1 is fed into this NOR gate and 1 and 0 gives us a 0. So Q complement remains the same. And this 0 is fed into this NOR gate. 0 NOR 0 is 1. So as you can see, when both S and R is 0, the Q and Q complement keeps its current state. So we call this uh, memory or no change. Okay, so now when R is 1 and S is 1, let's see what happens. 1 into a NOR gate would give us a 0. 1 into a NOR gate, 0. Now we see that both the outputs are 0. And this is an invalid state because 
as we mentioned earlier, the outputs, both outputs, must complement each other. One must be a 1 and the other must be 0. Uh, the problem with this circuit is that F or R, or even both, can be changed randomly due to all the processes going on in the circuit. So the value of S or R can be changed and this causes the output to change as well. So um, this brings us to the topic of control signals which are needed in order needed in order to regulate the output of the circuit. The most basic form or the most common form of control signals used in a given system is a clock. A clock is simply a frequency measured in hertz that goes from low to high at a constant rate. This means um, that the time period from this point to this point and from this point to this point are equal. It operates at a constant rate. The cir a circuit can either be level sensitive, as in the case of latches, or edge sensitive, as in the case of flip-flops. Level sensitive meaning that the circuit is triggered at this point of the clock pulse, and um, edge sensitive meaning that the circuit is triggered at this point of the clock pulse. Now the point where the pulse goes from low to high is called the rising edge and the point where it goes from high to low is called the falling edge. So now that we know what a clock signal is, when we attach it to an SR latch, we can create an SR flip-flop. As you can see, this part of the flip-flop is identical to the latch that we showed earlier and it operates in the same way. This is the true table that was shown earlier as well. Okay, so let's call the output here R star and the output here S star. Before we look at the operation of this flip-flop, let's assume that it's triggered on the rising edge of the clock, meaning that it is active when the clock signal is 1. When the clock signal is 0, nothing happens to the output of the circuit. It doesn't change. Okay, so let's start at when the clock signal is 1, R is 1, and S is 0. 1 here and a 1 into an AND gate would give us a 1 at R star and a 1 and a 0 into an AND gate would give us a 0 at S star. So when a 1 and a 0 is fed in 1 as R and S as 0 is fed into an SR latch which is this part of the flip-flop, what do we get? Um, R is 1 and S is 0. We get Q as 0 and Q bar as 1. Now when R is 0, and S is 1. A 1 and a 1 at S would give us 1 at S star and a 1 and a 0 would give us a 0 at R star. So when um, R is fed into the SR latch as 0 and S is fed in as 1, what do we get? Q would be equal to 1 
and q bar would be equal to zero. Keeping the same output, let's look at when r is zero and s is also zero. So a zero and a one into an AND gate is a zero. Zero and one is a zero. When a zero and a zero is fed into an SR latch, we get memory. So this condition is true. And the last condition, when R is one and S is one, one and one into an AND gate gets us one as S star and one and one gives us one at R star when a one and a one is fed into is fed into the SR latch we get the invalid state. Stay tuned for the next video which discusses more types of popular flip-flops.